YouTubers? Well, in the last few weeks you may have noticed that in the world there's been quite a lot of strife and quite a lot of revolution going on. This, in fact, has not escaped us here at St. Lemidia's. We indeed have had our own little amount of strife and, and revolution. Now, it's all happened last Sunday service. And to explain the events leading up to it, um, I, I will have to do first. What happened was we were due for a visit from one of our local fresh lady vicars um, who was going to be joining the uh, uh, neighbouring parish. However, she decided to come over and see how we did it at St. Clemidia's. Well, it was, so she was going to be our honorary guest, if you like, and I decided that what should I do for a sermon that day? It was going to be a little piece on Jesus um, hating fig trees and the way that he told them to bear fruit and, and they did not, so he cursed them and killed them, and, and why he did this and, and the understanding behind it. However, um, I'd written down the passages that I wanted reading in the Bible reading, which I, do, which I have, in fact, Mrs. Forty who Smythe does, just before I do my sermon. So I'd written them down, tried to phone her on her mobile phone, but unfortunately um, she couldn't, she wasn't available, I couldn't get her. However, I couldn't even leave a message, uh, I think she must have lost it. Um, however, Wayne, one of our young parishioners, um, who uh, was passing one day and lived next door to Mrs. Fortigal Smythe, happened to be passing, and I said, ah, Wayne, could I just give you this to give to Mrs. Fortigal Smythe um, for the Bible reading on Sunday? Um, and I gave it to Wayne and thought no, no more of it, and Sunday came along and we had our uh, honorary visitor, and uh, we were sitting down, and I thought, just, you know, just before the sermon, we were going to uh, have a Bible reading. Well, Mrs. Fortune Smythe, she came in with a face like thunder. And I thought, hmm, there's something wrong here, as you do. You pick up these things as a parish vicar. And um, but she, she went up and, and in front of the church and opened a Bible rather furiously like this. Um, and went on to read a passage which I had no idea she was going to read. Um, it was not what I'd written down at all. She in fact read, she read out a part of 1 Corinthians um, chapter 14. And uh, here's just a little piece of it to give you an idea. Um, this is verse 33 on. Okay. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace as in all churches of the saints. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. This is kind of the way that Mrs. Fortune Smythe read it out, to be honest. Um, it goes on. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for women to speak in the church. Well, um, I, there was a little more to it, but um, to give you a, a taste of what was said, I was flabbergasted. This was not what I meant to do a sermon on. Mrs. Fortigo smiled, she looked at me. Slam the Bible shut, thrust it down on the lectern from which we were speaking, and, and, and just stared at me. I looked across to the congregation, and, and there indeed was our honorary guest, who also looked a little perturbed, shall I say. Um, however, I started to worry a little. Um, I looked around. And then a thought came upon me, and I spoke to the people, I gave my sermon, and I said, many of you here today may be wondering why this passage has been read. It is a piece from the Bible that many people will pick upon when we speak about women in faith and in the churches. And I wanted to bring this up for a very good reason. The fact is 
that it's utter balderdash. I looked at the congregation, they were looking a little, um, well, what should I say, um, confused. This is not my normal sort of sermon, you see. I said, let us look at this passage, and let us look at Corinthians. Corinthians was generally believed to have been written by St. Paul, or Saul of wherever he was, perhaps Saul of Metatarsus or something. Tarsus, that was it. <laughs> that was my little joke, it sort of um, went flat, of course. However, um, Corinthians was generally written by St. Paul. He was considered by most the founder of the Christian, the Roman Christian faith. It was his church that was followed on. And if we look at this little passage, we can see quite easily that it was not written by St. Paul. Now, generally, if somebody's starting up a church, and we have to bear in mind there probably were no churches before the first church, uh, very early churches of this kind would have probably been a congregation of a few people in some houses, and, and they called themselves a church. So, generally we mustn't look at this as a lovely church, like St. Glimidia's, for instance. And also, if you look at this passage, it's a start, uh, for God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Well, let's look at the saints. St. Paul, of course, being a saint himself. But we're talking at the very earliest stages of Christianity. Um, it's very unlikely they, they would call their houses, or as it were at the time, after a saint. A church of the saint could be, of course, St. Paul doing his preaching. However, he was not in a church called St. Paul's. And the very first saints, well, we generally think upon saints as dead people from the Bible and a few other saints that have died in the name of Christianity. Um, however, at that time, there were very few saints. We have Saint Stephen, the very first one. He was believed to have been stoned just a few hours after the death of Jesus. But at that time, you wouldn't go running around, starting up a church and calling it, oh, let's go to church. What do we have? Jesus dead, Saint Stephen over there. Oh, Saint Stephen's church. No, it was the Church of Christ. Absolutely not the Church of the Saints. This would have come along later as dedication to the Saints. So we can write that off as Balderdash. And so, well, when was this piece written and why was it written? Well, in the early days of the church, as you know, it was the only way of educating people. And educating people was quite expensive. You couldn't just take women and men into, the, into um, a place of education in the churches at the time. For starters, they just didn't have the facilities in the toilets. So it was generally because women, well, let's face it, were generally doing the breeding and they had to look after the children. It was decided to educate the men and the men could go home and tell the wives about it. This is all this really meant. And it was added to the Bible, later date, obviously, because of the saints thing. And so it's out of all the dash and we can totally ignore it in the Church of England and not worry about having wonderful, beautiful and lovely ladies like Mrs. Fortigus Smythe and our lovely guest here today. And now we've cleared that up, it may never be brought up again. Thank you for listening. I can't tell you how relieved I was. It went down a storm. They loved the sermon. Wayne, however, can piss off.